Hello everyone, Giltar here with a model kit review. This time we'll be looking at Kotobukiya's Border Break model kit lineup, and specifically uh, we're looking at the Heavy Guard Type 2 model kit. Uh, this is a 135 scale model. Uh, it's a fairly new model kit. It came out a couple of months ago in March of 2010. Uh, the normal retail price is 3,500 yen or roughly $38 American at current exchange rates. Now I'll be making this into a two-part review in which part one will cover the model kit details, uh, the accessories and articulation, and part two will cover uh, basically the pros and cons and final thoughts on this particular product. Now I'm starting off with a size comparison. On this side here we've got the uh, high grade Universal Sentry RX-782 Gundam which is in the 1 to 144 scale. Uh, the model there is about 5 inches tall and as you can see the Heavy Guard Type 2 is slightly taller even though it's not standing completely upright. Uh, on this side we have the Master Grade Gundam uh, RX-782 in the 1 to 100 scale. Um, it's certainly taller than the Heavy Guard uh, at about just over seven inches tall, uh, but if the Heavy Guard model kit was standing completely upright with the legs straight and everything sort of aligned correctly, it'd probably be just over six inches tall. So the Heavy Guard Type 2 is sort of a nice um, sort of midway point in terms of a uh, model kit size between the 1 to 144 scale and the 1 to 100 scale in Gundam model kits. So I'll move these two models aside. Now as you can see the Heavy Guard Type 2 is a fairly bulky uh, design. Uh, it comes from the Border Break series of video games by Sega, uh, which I believe are uh, basically in Japan. I don't know if they're actually in North America. Uh, I have no knowledge about this video game except for what I've read briefly in uh, sort of looking to the background of this model kit lineup. Uh, but the designs are quite interesting. They're all very um, uh, mechanical in, in that they look like more real robot in design. They're more like uh, uh, more like robots that are machines rather than something like in Gundam and many other um, mecha anime series which have robots but really have a lot of humanite, uh, humanite humanistic uh, design features. They, they look more they're closer to humans in terms of, uh, of their aesthetics whereas the border break model kits or mecha designs rather do seem to be more of the real robot side where they are vehicles, they are robots and they do resemble humans or at least humanoids. Um, so that is something that you'll notice right off the bat. Now as far as um, just some basic information, I'll show you guys the instruction booklet. Uh, pretty standard for Kotobukiya products here. Very nice cover art. Uh, as you can see the border break logo down here. Nothing too fancy, some nice line art here, some promotional photography up here, a bunch of background information. And uh, the layout of the different runners, uh, a sort of a legend glossary to show you guys you know, what these different symbols mean. Um, for the most part you really don't need to know except for this one which is a glue glue apart symbol. It shows like a little, almost like an eyedropper like um, symbol. Uh, and as you can see, the bulk of the instruction booklet is just basically standard instructions from, you know, plastic snap assembly model kits. Um, at the uh, sort of back uh, of the book, inside the cover and the last page, some really nice photography of the assembled and painted model kit. It uh, shows these uh, different weapon accessories uh, as a sort of color guide. And up here you have a color chart for getting sort of accurate colors for your model kit and then the back cover. So, very nice uh, presentation as usual. Kotobukiya makes really uh, nicely done instruction booklets. Now as far as accessories goes, uh, it comes with basically three w sort of wieldable or equipable weapons. Um, the first one is in its hands right now, a sort of machine gun like weapon very nicely done, well sculpted, very uh, sort of realistic looking in terms of like this is something that could look like it would exist in the real world. Very nice details and there is some articulation in that. You can fold the front section back and that's really for storage mode. You can actually store this gun and this uh, bazooka like weapon which has an extendable um, back part here and front clip just went off but it can extend in the back and it's it's kind of like a mini bazooka or a rocket launcher and both the machine gun and the bazooka have this sort of structure at the top which is used to clip into this rig or harness on the torso and you basically just clip it on 
and store the weapons like that. Though these are a little loose. Now I'll get into that later on, but you can store the machine gun or the bazookas on these racks up here. Uh, and the bazooka, just like the machine gun, is really nicely sculpted, very finely defined uh, features and grooves for panel lining and painting uh, if you guys are inclined to do so. The third weapon is this large cannon which currently um, you can, you're supposed to be able to store it in the back clip here like so, but it's, it's basically very loose and it can't stay in there. Just the weight of the weapon uh, drags it down and makes it fall off. And th Again, that's another issue of looseness and I'll go more into that later on. But um, this is in its sort of storage mode. You just fold it like that and when, when it's ideally sort of clipped into the back there, it, you can use this sort of um, swiveled part here to adjust the position of the cannon. So you know this is I, I guess an a extremely long range artillery weapon. Uh, now that's pretty much for uh, accessories, uh, just weapons. Now um, there are some other accessories in that this is kind of like a, a an ammo or weapons clip they can put into the forearm or back of the forearm. Um, and you don't even have to use this. You can actually remove this clip and replace it with another sort of mini holster clip that serves the same function as the rig back here in that you can store the machine gun or the bazooka by clipping it on if you just attach it here to the forearm. But I like this uh, accessory a little better so I'll just clip this on right now. And on this arm, I, it looks like an ammo clip. Um, it is removable, but again, I don't really see the point of taking it off. I think it looks fine there. Um, something I did forget to mention, uh, in the back of this large cannon, there's actually an ammo clip that can be removed, which is a nice little feature. Uh, basically has a rectangular sort of peg-like structure and then a slot back here. You just slide it in, it clips in, and holds in there actually quite securely. So that's a neat little feature there. So those are the accessories. Now as far as articulation, um, this actually has surprisingly uh, a good range of articulation considering the bulk of the proportions. Uh, starting off at the feet, uh, it basically it uses, I'll show you guys here, it uses uh, a sort of ball socket joint part here and then it pegs into a polycap joint at the ankle. So it does allow swiveled movement uh, but also full rotation if you want. The front portion of the foot, the toe section, does swivel a bit. It is hinged, but it doesn't move a lot, so I don't, I don't really see the point of moving it there. Uh, but I mean, that's an option if you, you know, if you want to move it around. The knees themselves actually are pretty good. Uh, they bend over 90 degrees, which is impressive considering the bulk of the of the legs. Uh, the hips are on. Uh, whoops. Well, that's a problem. Uh, the hips are on sort of the, these swivel uh, joints so that you can um, basically swivel the legs around very far to the front and to the back because there's no real like sort of skirt or waist armor that gets in the way and that's the other leg coming off. So that is a problem with this model kit. Whoops. I'll just leave that there. Uh, this isn't looking too good, but uh, I'll get into that later on. Now as far as the, uh, the, the waist goes, you can bend it back and forth to a pretty good degree. And you can turn it or rotate it basically to about this far. You don't go 360, but it, you know there's really no need to do that for this uh, uh, model kit. Uh, the shoulders are very similar to the, some of the newer high-grade uh, Gundam model kits and the master grades and perfect grades in that you do have the ability to go back and forth and up and down like that. You have full rotation, full rotation uh, at below the shoulder or at the upper bicep. Uh, you can bend the arm almost flush, pretty much flush to the uh, shoulder. Uh, the wrists themselves um, have a hinge point so that you can actually move the hands up and down like that. And there goes another part. And you can rotate the hands freely. Finally, the head itself is on a ball joint so that you can move it up and down and rotate it to a good degree. So, haha, <laughs> that's basically the articulation for the model kit. Um, so I'm going to stop part one at this point. I'll be back in part two with the pros and cons and my final thoughts. Thanks for watching.